The titles of Christ occur less frequently in the NIV, in the New American Standard Bible, than in the authorized version. So let's, let's explain this. The, what's called the complete signature is given to our Savior often in the authorized version. What is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you recognize that title of Christ? The, that's called the complete signature. The Lord, that's the name that He got when uh, He uh, died for us. Right? Jesus... That's, he's our Savior. That's, that's the name that identifies His humanity. And then Christ, He's the Messiah. He's the Jewish Messiah. So this identifies His office. Notice the omission of portions of the complete signature in the NIV and the NASB. All right? So the Lord is removed from that 35 times in the NASB and the NIV. Jesus, His humanity, identifying God and man together... That's removed 73 times in the New American Standard Bible, 36 times in the NIV. How about Christ? He's the Messiah. It's removed 43 times in the NASB and 44 times in the NIV. That's a total of 156 times in the NASB and 115 times in the NIV. Here's what I think is interesting. Many evangelical scholars don't like the NIV. So say John MacArthur. He doesn't like the NIV. The NASB is worse in this way. I'm sorry, the NASB is worse in this way than the NIV. Isn't that interesting? But let's look at this. Why is that significant? Why does that matter if, if Jesus is still there or the Lord is still there? Why does it matter? The removal of Christ and Lord is a strike against our Savior's deity in every place it occurs. Whenever I hear someone wants to move away from the King James, I always ask him this question. Is the deity of Christ important to you? How many of you the deity of Christ is important to you? All right. That's what this is about. The name Jesus is the name above every name. It speaks of our Lord's humanity in distinction from His deity. So when you have the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord is God. Jesus, God in flesh. Christ, the coming Messiah. It's vital that we have that. That's our faith. That's who we believe in. What behind, lies behind this disassociation of our Lord's titles? I have a list of 86 examples where the modern versions disassociate the name Jesus from other titles and acts of deity. The separation of Jesus from Christ occurs far too often to look for any cause other than deliberate editing in certain New Testament manuscripts. That's from Jack Mormon's book. It's on purpose, folks. How did it happen? that there was a strong movement in the early centuries which could result in such a systematic editing, there can be no doubt. And so this is where, remember Daniel's uh, statements at the beginning about um, don't allow your theological perspective to affect what text you choose. Well, if you have a theological perspective that Jesus Christ is, is God and you have a text that clearly undermines that, that should become obvious to you. Right? Unless you say it doesn't matter. What error affected ancient manuscripts of the Bible? Adoptionism. The foremost error regarding the person of Christ is to deny His true deity and true humanity. What's wrong with the Jehovah's Witnesses? They don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. What's wrong with the Mormons? They don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. What's wrong with the Oneness Pentecostals? They don't believe in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They, don't, they believe it's just Jesus. They're modalists. They're, they're Sabellians. It's a, it's a doctrinal heresy. Okay, So that's the key is understanding who Christ is. The chief means by which this was done, this undermining of the deity of Christ, and which finds expression down to our own day, is technically known as adoptionism or spirit Christology. What is that? Adoptionism. So this is the, what they would teach. Jesus of Nazareth, an ordinary man of unusual virtue, was adopted by God into divine sonship by the advent of the Christ spirit at his baptism. So Jesus is just a good man. He's not God. He's baptized, and the Holy Spirit descends on him, and there's a uniting of the Christ Spirit with the body of a good man. That's adoptionism. Therefore, Jesus became Christ at his baptism rather than the fact that he was always the Christ from eternity. Though united for a time, Jesus and Christ were thus said to be separate personages. That's why you have to separate the names Jesus and Christ. 
See, it's a theological bias that made its way into the text. How did that happen? The Shepherd of Hermas, all right? So this was a document that was written in the, in probably in the 200s, and this man was a Gnostic, all right? Gnostics are people who believe that there's a higher knowledge. It's based on the Greek word gnosko. When I was in Bible college, he would help us remember that word. It means knowledge by saying, I don't gno. Okay? So Gnosticism is looking for a higher knowledge. Here's what the shepherd of Hermas said. The Holy Spirit is regarded as the preexistent son. Is the Holy Spirit the preexistent son? You've got to have doctrinal discernment here. Is the Holy Spirit the preexistent son? The Holy Spirit is regarded as the preexistent Son. The Redeemer is the virtuous man chosen by God with whom that Spirit of God was united. As he did not defile the Spirit but kept him constantly as his companion, he carried out the work to which the deity, the deity had called the non-deity, Jesus, the deity had called him, he was in virtue of a divine decree adopted as a son. You know what's amazing? When they discovered Codex Sinaiticus, there are two other books of the Bible added to the New Testament. Remember, the Apocrypha is added to the Old Testament. There were two books added to the New Testament, the Epistle of Barnabas and the Shepherd of Hermas. 